What is going on guys? So I've had a lot of questions in the last day in the comments asking about PvP and the state of PvP in Alpha 2 and what you can expect. So I'm making this PvP centric video to hopefully cover all of your questions, talking about what's there, what's not there, what works well, what doesn't work well, and all of that great stuff. So starting off, there are really like four types of PvP in Alpha 2 to start. There is the open world PvP that you can just kill people everywhere and face a corruption system. There is caravans. There is the two lawless zones being the Sand Squall Desert and the Tropics. And there is Node and Guild Wars. Obviously, if you don't know how PvP works in general in Ashes of Creation, Ashes of Creation has what is called the corruption system. It's basically penalizing you for griefing and ganking other players while rewarding you for doing the actual PvP events with a PvP flag state. In order to get flagged for PvP, you have to attack somebody else and then an auto flag. And if you attack somebody who isn't flagged and kill them, you go corrupt. In the open world of PvP in Alpha 2, this is exactly what you get. You can attack people absolutely anywhere. Anywhere. I know Steven said in a recent interview with Vladis that safe zones will potentially be a thing in the game, at least in the starting zones, and we may see those implemented before Alpha 2 starts, but as of right now, you can kill people anywhere in the world, and... At times, it can be kind of fun, and at other times, it can be kind of frustrating. So, there are times where players are going out farming resources, and since it's an alpha, there's only so much content to do. Towards the end of the test, a lot of people seem to go PvP and go corrupt, because their character is about to be wiped anyways. So, that's really the frustrating part, running around and grinding, and suddenly being killed even though i've been on the other side of it where i may have killed a few people as well um the corruption system in general is very penalizing which is intended to be this way if you run around and gank people you are going to regret it once it kind of is tweaked a bit right now the way to work off corruption is you die and depending on the level of corruption you have the more deaths it may take to completely wipe it out. You can also work off corruption by grinding XP, and I don't know the exact amount, but it is a significant amount of XP. I spent hours trying to grind off corruption the other day just to see how long it would take, and I didn't even achieve it in like three to four hours of grinding bears which gave like 600 xp per kill so it is a lot of xp to grind off but unfortunately with the death side of things right now corruption gives you a 25 percent stat dampening it gives you one to three of your items are dropped it gives you a six percent additional xp debt it really hurts like as a corrupt player trying to farm things i was constantly running out of mana before the thing was even half dead my health was low my damage was lower and honestly the gear drop kind of suck you also get a 25% increased raw resource drop which is brutal when you are have a ton of stuff in your inventory and you just don't want to lose it because you also lose materials on death in general that just disappear there are materials that just go away that nobody can loot upon death that you're not going to get back even if you loot your own corpse so having that and then the additional corruption penalties it's rough and i would not recommend going corrupt unless it is absolutely worth it to you there's something you really want that somebody else has because it's painful unless you don't mind dropping your items and then one death you know it'll go away but i imagine that'll get tweaked down the road steven did say they want to implement at least it remembering your kills so when you kill somebody the second third time it remembers those first kills and corruption is even more deadly but even right now in his current state it is rough and it can be not fun at times but some of those pvp scenarios actually are fun because you have these random scenarios that pop up of we've had some guild skirmishes happen where other guilds attack us or our guild attacks other people there are people who will provoke pvp and then not realize you're in a party and all of a sudden they get swarmed you can control world event spawns by doing pvp you can really test pvp too because some people just won't attack you back because then they don't get flagged so you go corrupt and there's really some fun mechanics in it and pvp feels good like in a group basis pvp it seems relatively balanced which is how it should be pvp is not meant to be balanced on a 1v1 level right now it really depends on the archetype clerics are op they have heals they do a lot of damage rangers suck they don't do damage at all and everything in between so if pvp is something you're looking for right now i'd go out in a group because there are times where a cleric is going to wreck you and 
you're not gonna stand a chance, where you may wreck somebody else, which is kind of the rock, paper, scissor method that's intended, although the game isn't balanced yet, so it's not fully there. When it comes to caravans, caravans are in the game and they are functioning. They work just like the caravan preview. You can go and buy a caravan. You can equip upgraded parts to it that you can acquire through crafting. Then escort this caravan from node to node. You place the caravan down in a spot near the node to start your journey. Rafts kind of work. They're a little glitchy. But they do go there and they are, in fact, the best way to make gold, really. They give you a significant increase going node to node. And they're going to be something that everybody's going to probably be doing once we get to that more end game content of Alpha 2. Obviously with caravans the corruption system doesn't apply, it works as a world event and people come near and they can choose to attack or defend the caravan and then they go into the PvP flag state. You're not going to risk the corruption and you can have some PvP fun with skirmishes and all of that good stuff. The lawless zones do exist, the desert is real, the tropics are kind of real. The desert is this pretty large area and it feels bigger than it is because there are like caverns and stuff to navigate and there are mountains in between where the riverland is a bit more wide open where you can almost walk across it and not really have to go around much. The desert is completely the opposite of that. You're going to be moving around mountains and moving around cliffs and all that sort of stuff. Out in the desert and the tropics, there are high level three-star NPCs, which mean they're very hard to kill elites. And these are supposed to have high-level resources. I didn't get high enough to actually go out and kill them when in any of these tests. This was just, these stuff was really just added in the last two tests. But overall, the desert is shaping out nice. Once that's filled with content, it'll be a great place to be. And I'm really liking the feel of it right now. It's got a ways to go, but from going from nothing to this, it's pretty cool. Out in the desert, there is the caravansary that has the everything you need basically to run caravans or turn in caravans. So at a end game level, you're going to want to go out here and you're going to farm resources and you're going to bring them to other nodes to make money. All these resources, I assume, drop off these high level mobs that are out here. And again, there's supposed to be a scorpion world boss at some point in the desert. I don't know if this is added at the beginning or not. I have not seen it yet. I don't think he's actually in the game. The tropics, on the other hand, the tropics is just starting its life. The terrain is very incomplete. I talked about this a bit in my other video the foliage isn't there there's mobs in there but not as many mobs as the desert has in my opinion um there is also the caravansary in there but the caravansary in the tropics is on an island so you have to actually embark into the raft form of the caravan to get to the turning point which i think is pretty cool it's really giving you a feel of how these different biomes are gonna interact and affect the, that type of gameplay which is cool and again both of these zones are open flag pvp with them being such a high level and having high level mob NPCs. There wasn't really a lot of PVP that happened in any of the tests that I did, especially because we're kind of dwindling on numbers in these later tests. A lot of people seem to be not coming back and returning, which is what Alpha 2 is for. The masses will come back and the lawless zones should be pretty fun. For Node and Guild Wars, Node Wars, they work just like we saw in the Node War Showcase and there is the God Spike preview that we saw and that's really it. I didn't participate in any, really, we didn't Genesis didn't have the numbers, nodes, you need to be a mayor to start the node, and then the, you have to go through the whole process of gathering resources, clearing the node war, and all that. For guild wars, a guild, you need a war declaration scroll as a guild, and you can declare a war against another guild. And there are different types of guild wars, which I think are kind of cool. There is the just go and kill other enemy guild members, and basically it just keeps a tally of which guild has the most kills. But there are also things like fishing guild wars where it's a fishing competition between two guilds to gather the most fish and there's a whole bunch of different scrolls in there and i think guild wars are going to be a pretty fun dynamic even in these early alpha 2 stages and it's going to be fun one of those things that you do in the downtime where you're waiting for the next patch you declare a war and go against other guilds to either kill them or do these artisan type events and it's going to be pretty fun overall i think pvp is in a very fun state right now obviously there's a lot of fine tuning to go the classes need tuning and balancing but like for pvp i enjoy it i'd love to see more world pvp events happening in the actual map but that will happen as time goes on and the players fill and then 
create their own events too, which is going to be pretty fun. But yeah, you got more PvP questions, drop them down below. I'm slowly getting through all the questions you guys ask. I'm trying to get back to everybody, but there's a lot of questions, so it may take some time. Otherwise, I will be going live again on Twitch several days this week, including Tuesday, 10 a.m. Eastern Time. You can go follow twitch.tv forward slash RichieSH.